Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Next, human Revolution. Game thoughts. Every major character in this game turns out to basically be the opposite of what you start out thinking that they are. It really shows the how effective misdirection can be and how appearances can be deceiving. That's, that's a really cool aspect, I think. You, you really think that it's going to be this black and white clean cut. You know exactly who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. And by the end, you're trusting the people you started out thought, thinking were good, thinking were bad, and mistrusting the guys you thought were good. And you really find that it's, you don't know who to trust. That's, that's really cool. I think they did a great job. And it's perfectly fitting for the Deus Ex universe that is an inter integral part of the Deus Ex universe. Now, the... Actually, before, I have one major gripe with this that I'm going to get to, but I guess I will start with the four endings. I like how they're basically all open, they just kind of... If, I think that the first two games got progressively more definite endings. In the first one it's relatively open, and then the second one it's very, very definite, very locked into one particular thing. In this, I think they do a good job of bringing it back to just being completely open, and it's basically just the the basic direction that things will go from there on out. Will people hate extremists, people who react with fear to new things? Will people hate, you know, Un, unrestrained science, and people will people think that regulation is vital to progress, to to make sure that progress doesn't kill us, basically. Or will people know the the full truth, know exactly what happened, and. Yeah, including the truth about the Illuminati, you know, the, the whole thing, and then be allowed to make up their own minds. Yeah, I, I really like how that's an actual option. Tell the truth and let people decide, because then we, then we are starting with truth, and I, I think that's a really great starting point. It, it might sound obvious, but just there, there's... I understand why. Some people might think, oh, we, we better keep this hidden or something, but yeah, anyway, I think it's a great way, great, great idea to make that an option and then also allow the two sides of the regulation debate, which has been ongoing for the entire game. You know, it, it ends at this big summit, but it was, actually, is that the summit or is it just, anyway, it's, it's, it starts with just talking about that soon there's going to be, you know, this debate about regulation and, or this, you know, whether or not the UN will decide regulation. That will be, you know, going up for debate soon. And people are talking about pros and cons of it throughout the entire game. And then at the very end, you get to decide, do I broadcast the full unedited truth or do I use the Pikus propaganda machine, which has been working really well throughout the game? You yourself kind of
kind of buy it at times, you know, before you realize. I think they, they do kind of, they drop a pretty big hint early on, but at first you're not really thinking that the, the one news source is propaganda. Anyway, yeah, the, that the, you could uh, have her edit the, the video to basically lie for one side and against one side on both sides of that issue that, that that's really cool and then at the end there's also the possibility that it doesn't get spun by the media at all no one will survive to tell the story and yeah you know it's I really like the, the point made in that video, especially with the, you know, you need this... Ah, wait, I'm mixing stuff up. Anyway, yeah, I, I just think it's it's cool that they also allow you to do that, to say, the, you know, clean slate, basically. And, yeah, I, I love the all the philosophy of the game, really makes you think, and, yeah. The major gripe I have with this, that I need to, you know, again, this is not the review, this is me talking about the game that, the, the stuff that I couldn't go into without getting into spoilers. So, spoiler-wise, basically my one major gripe is that Megan isn't actually dead. I really thought, and, and the other scientists as well, you, you know, you open with this big attack and then you have this motivation of, you know, these guys behind it all killed his ex and these other scientists in addition to brutalizing him, which they still did do. And then, over the course of the game, you get hints that, oh, maybe she's not dead, there was no body into it. And finally, you're you're right there. You're saving the various scientists, except you know, Savchenko. Sorry, I was a little late there, buddy. But your arm has a nice new home. Think of it that way. And yeah, you're you're saving them all. I like that he at least confronts her and says, "You seem to have it nice here. What's what's going on?" I thought you had been. At first, I thought you had been killed. Now. Then I thought you had been kidnapped, now I find you working comfortably. You know, this is, this is looking less like a, a prison cell and more like a, a you know, change of jobs, a change of employers, I suppose. <sighs> yeah, for, for one thing, this... I, I realize that this is not the only thing in recent years to have done this, and. Sadly, I can't name examples without spoiling those, but, yeah. It's this idea that someone isn't necessarily dead, even though at first we thought they were, and then it turns out that they're still alive and could be saved by the hero in the story. For one thing, this is jerking around with our emotions, telling us that someone is dead, and as we're trying to progress, I mean, process, I mean, I'll grant that these are fictional characters, but still, the idea with the story is that you get emotionally invested, and yeah, they're telling us this person is dead, and, you know, and, and then suddenly they say, ah, they might still be alive, and yeah, that's jerking around with our emotions. And the thing that really really takes me off about it is that it basically promotes this idea which is is common today that basically anything can be overcome there's there's nothing that you can't find a positive solution to there's there are no consequences things will always work out as long as you are the big hero and there, there is basically no loss, and I, I get that with technology and with how easy a lot of things have been getting in the recent decades, and at increasing speeds, you know, it's, it's exponential growth. 
I get that that makes people think that they're invulnerable and that things will just get better and better and better. But it's just not like that. Things, there are always consequences to quote Samuel Jackson, that badass of badasses. There are always going to be consequences and people need to realize this and accept it and then get to the point where they can do a cost-benefit analysis and say what what are the worst consequences so that they don't shy away from something that looks bad just because it looks bad just because there's something over here that looks better because once again looks can be deceiving and it's only going to get worse if people don't accept that and that's always been something that people that humanity has had trouble realizing that's why we invent religions that's why there are always there are all these leaders of countries, past and present, that get into power by promising things they can't... I'm going to stop moving my hands now. By promising things they can't actually deliver. And the more people actually realize that there are always consequences and that things don't just work out just because you're... Just because you're trying really hard to do the right thing does not mean that things are going to work out. And people need to realize this so we can stop electing crap leaders and so that just in general things get better. Nothing benefits from the idea that things can always be solved in a nice, you know, positive manner. That's, that is the, the thinking of a child who has not yet matured to basically their, their brain can't quite process things that are in, in of outside of black and white yet. And that's really how it is. It's fine for those children because they can't process more yet. And that's of course acceptable, but once they get to an age where their brain can process it, they should learn it. There, rant over. I think that the game does a good job of kind of letting you realize, letting you piece together the twists right before the reveal. Like, I was standing right outside room 404 and I was going, she's actually an AI. She doesn't really exist. And then you go in there and then you think that it's her and then, oh wait, that was just, what's it called, a, a hologram. And that also sort of makes you think, well, right, could this still mean that she's an AI? And then you get down to the basement and the there's her face, she's an AI. You know, he walks into the room, the music swells, as it tends to do in the big reveals in the game. And, yeah, I, I thought that that was a really nice little... I also, when Darrow mentions, when you see it, you will realize that I have gone too far, or something like that. And you're thinking, there's going to be something really creepy at the very end, isn't there? There's going to be some big reveal about his security system, and that's going to be the final boss, because this is charging up for a boss fight. You know, obviously, I guess basically, the Illuminati had Darrow build the, the Hyron Core, whatever it's called, to allow them to pr protect the... Not the ship, what's it called? The, the thing that can control augmented people. So that there is, because you fight this, you know, protection system there at the very end. And I, th that's a really great idea because basically it's, it's nice and isolated and people aren't going to look there. If, if they had it in a military base, people would think, that's where it is, if, if people started to rise against it, which obviously they would try to avoid, but still, it's, why not play it smart? So they put it at the very bottom of this installation in the Arctic. It's nice and remote, and, it, wait, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was in the Arctic. And there's this cover, you know, people show up at Darius and he's like, why, gentlemen, we are just, we are, we are fixing global warming here. That's, that's all, or global warming the ocean something. There's a lot of details to this game. They, they were trying to do something nice. I wasn't even entirely clear on there at the end if Daryl was even trying to counteract, but I guess he was. I mean, the Illuminati are not about, I don't know, keeping people in chains. They're about, 
as presented in these games anyway. They are about trying to guide people in the right directions. And uh, don't get me wrong, this universe, the, the Deus Ex universe fully realizes that sometimes the Illuminati are going to do horrible things in that reality. Yeah, just play the other games and you'll see. I'm not going to be doing any spoilers for the other two games in this, don't worry. Now, the... Um, I mentioned, uh, I, I alluded to earlier, that you, you see the Pikus propaganda in action before you, again, one of the big reveals, you know, you get into the... That was even that wasn't even really a plot point. That was just kind of something you pieced together yourself. But the now wait wait yeah that's that's revealed when you find out that she's an AI. Anyway, you know at first you're just you're hearing this is Eliza Cassandra for Pike is news and you might read a paper or something. But it's actually right after the very first mission. You know you get to you know you you save the plant and then you come out, and the first paper you read says that the police took care of it. It doesn't mention any augmented people fixing things. I'm not even sure it mentioned that it was purity first terrorists that were doing it. They, they just made, made sure to mention that it's Seraph Industries, you know, it's, it's, augment, it's augmentation corporations. So maybe they deserved the attack, and it was police that fixed it. Where, in, you know, in reality, you fixed it, and the police weren't even allowed to go in until you had fixed everything. And so you actually see the propaganda before it's really revealed that Pikas does propaganda. And so it, it kind of plants the seed. You, you get to thinking, wait, does that mean all their, all their reporting were lies? And then after the reveal, you also, every time you pick up a newspaper and where you know for sure what happened, it's propaganda in the newspaper. You don't know about the rest of it. And again, it has that nice atmosphere of mistrust and paranoia. Now, the... The, the glitches before you get the new chip, if you get the new chip. I haven't done a playthrough yet where I didn't get the new chip, but I suppose it basically means that you, that one boss fight where it's, you know, you're all glitching out, I guess it wouldn't glitch out for that. I'm not sure there'd be anything else because they don't have the control over your new chip. I would like to see that. I, next playthrough I do, I'm probably not going to get the new chip, just so I see her press the button and then it does nothing because you didn't get a new chip. Anyway, I don't know if that's how it plays out. Anyway, the... But, but yeah, the, the various glitches leading up to when you can get a new chip were really creepy and really makes you... Th it's, I love when games do that, when, when they have you, I mean, you, you encounter enemies all the time in, in the game, and if, if you, you know, when you die, you see the, the system completely shutting off, and so to have it suddenly, without provocation, and without you being in an open conflict, suddenly you start glitching out, that's really creepy, and you start to think, wait, what, what's happening? You know, is, is, and, and how, how do I even fix it? It's not like when you're being shot at and you shoot back. It's just suddenly something's glitching out. What do I do? Really, really nice and creepy. I really wish that we got to know the various spec ops, I guess. The, the various soldiers that we fight, the, the augmented soldiers that make up most of the boss fights in this. Basically, we get names, and that only happens just as you're fighting them or afterwards. It's like, I'm not sure I even heard the name of the female one. It's just, it says it in the, in the you know, little blurb it has when you're loading your game. It says, ah, there, there was trouble in the form of, what was it, Sandoval? Well, wait, Sandoval. Sorry, I'm not good with names. Anyway, yeah, all we get are names, and there's a little hint of personality, 
with at least the first and the last. You know, the first one is like very sure of himself and sort of, he's a soldier to the end. He fights to stop you. And then the other, the, the last guy, I, I swear I'm not trying to be, you know, I'm all for, what's it, equal, equal opportunity. I'm, I'm not trying to be sexist. I just, I can't mention anything about the woman. Did she even speak? Did she have a single, did she have a voice? I can't think of anything about her that defines her. Anyway, the last guy that you find, he's all like, you know, uh, you won't get Megan back. People like us always lose the ones we love. And that's great. I just I wanted more of that. I wanted to know who these people are. It makes boss fights so much more interesting when you actually know the person, especially when it's a character. Not all boss fights in games are characters. Sometimes it's just another enemy. You know, the, I mean, you don't know most of the people you take out in the game. But the boss fights, these guys could be characters, and they do exhibit just a tiny little bit of personality, and I just wish we had loads more. Think of how interesting it would have been if we actually fought someone we knew over the course of the game. Suddenly, you're fighting this guy that you used to trust, or something like that, you know. Now, the... I really like that Taggart is revealed to not be a bad guy. He's clearly just worried about where this technology will take people. He doesn't want augmented people getting hurt. You know, it's, it's very clear from when you meet him. I really, it really hit me when Malik died. I, I did not think, I seriously, I tried to kill them, the, the guy shooting at her chopper so fast that she wouldn't die, but it didn't seem like I could do anything. It's just, you really get to know her, you really get a good, this is what I'm talking about, it, it makes much more of an impact when it's someone that you've really gotten close to, you know, you, you actually, yeah, you, you really get to like her and you, you know, you're helping her, well, you are if you take that one side quest for her and yeah, it, and, and then they kill her, it's, yeah, and that was also really showing, you know, th things just got real, it's, yeah, people are going to die, and then you find her body in the freaking harvester shop, man, if I hadn't been doing a non-lethal playthrough, that would have made me kill the freaking harvesters right there. Now, the, yeah, the, the, I suppose we should have seen it coming, really. I mean, she, they, they have that line of, you know, he's, he's like, oh, remind me never to take you off. And she's like, oh, you could never, it, they're, they're really bonding and it's all, it's, you know, it's, it's the equivalent of the war movie where the, you know, the young guy shows a picture of his girlfriend to the war buddies. It's just, you're dead meat. Sorry, something, but. In that one subquest, side quest, where you, I'm new to RPGs, can you tell? Where you're disarming a bomb, finding and disarming a bomb that a skinhead got. The guy who asks you to do the side quest is really, he's, he's really upset. And he's, one of the things he says is, we've got a major, we, we've got a big bullseye painted all over our asses. I don't know, to me that sounds like you don't have so much of a problem with extreme skinheads, extremist skinheads. Your problem is with not getting drunk with your buddies near a tattoo parlor. I... Yes, I, I know everyone loves these terrible jokes of mine, so just one more. When the when Detroit is erupting in riots and the police are fighting in that, you you come across the street preacher in the in the slum area, and he's talking about how you know we we have been 
We, we used to be blind, and now we stand at the edge of an abyss. That sounds like an ideal time to regain your sight. Now the... This felt a lot like a zombie game near the very end. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about that, but yes, it's, suddenly they're all coming at you, saying nonsense, and you're finding all these different, you know, zombie game and or post-apocalyptic horror thriller game. You know, you're finding these ravaged, you know, bodies and machines on fire and all this stuff. It was nicely done, at least. And I really like how this ties into Deus Ex 1. The, the, there are various things throughout it, but the very end with Bob Page appearing. And I, I knew that was him. I called it when I saw the opening cutscene. Not the first time I saw the opening cutscene, but the second time I, I recognized Bob Page. I just really like how that, you know, regardless of the four ending, of which of the four endings you choose, that happens. Megan survives because she wasn't in the uh, Panchea, you know, building. And yeah, Bob Page is out there and part of the Illuminati at this point. And so, yeah, it, it sets up Deus Ex 1. And still, without spoiling anything about that game, and without really, I don't know, I suppose it might confuse people who don't know Deus Ex 1 already, but then there's reason to go and play it. It's, it's basically a, a, an easter egg fan service for fans of the original game, and then they play the theme tune to the original game, and I'm sitting there humming along, I, Cannot get enough of that theme. Now, I appreciate how much this sort of shows both sides of different things. You know, you, you meet homeless people and they tell you, I didn't do anything wrong, I, just, I lost my job and suddenly I was out on the street, and these various things. I wish that they would be a little bit more, I don't know, maybe they should have researched more or something about the portrayal of sex workers. A lot of it is basically fine, I just wish, I don't know, I guess, maybe I'm asking too much, but there's this bit where you overhear a sex worker and her current John, I think he's like Bell Tower, or maybe he's Tai Young Medical Worker, I don't remember exactly. You can steal a Tai Young Medical Access card from him and knock him out and does nothing. So, except give you a little XP, so that's cool. Anyway, you overhear them and she's like talking and really cheery and happy and he's like not even really listening and just can, I don't know. I suppose, you know what, there's probably a lot of Johns who are like that. I just wish that it would also show that there are, you know, sometimes the sex workers and the Johns have a positive relationship with each other. There are regulars who have a really good relationship with the sex workers, and some of them, and this is going to surprise a lot of people, don't even have sex with the sex worker. They just want the company. They just want to have a conversation, you know, these are maybe guys who are too shy to approach women otherwise, or maybe they have trouble finding one that will listen. This is a major positive of the, the field of sex work, and I just really wish that it would get more positive attention, and I'm only really saying this because they do the the negative attention, they, they have several of these, little, like the John who wasn't listening, and then you have, I think there's like one who's like basically cheating on his wife to be there, and 
just various, yeah, I just, I don't know, maybe I'm asking too much, it's just, I'm, it's something I'm passionate about. I think that covers everything I wanted to say, so, yeah. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.